in this box is without a doubt the most important and critical decision that you're going to make throughout this entire process. Sometimes you put a bunch of work in deer lawn throughout the season and come fall time when it's supposed to look its best, it just doesn't hit the mark. If your lawn's thin, if it doesn't get as dark green as you like, maybe you deal with a lot of fungus throughout the year, this time of year right now is the prime time to make the biggest difference in your lawn for the rest of its life. If you're gonna get it right, there's exactly three things that you really need to master to make sure that you have the best success. This lawn that you see behind me was benefit of those three principles. Last year, I completely killed it off, planted this from seed, and it's the best it's ever looked and ever performed. And it's the same three principles that I'm using back here to give me the best success with this overseed project this season. And that was before we got like six inches of rain in two days and it washed a bunch of my seed out. Nonetheless, let's get into it. Overseeding your lawn or doing a complete renovation is without a doubt probably the best way that you can improve your tired old lawn. Even if you have a really shady yard in the backyard like me. Most important choice about your entire overseeding project is what's in this box behind me. What you choose to get in this box before you start your project is without a doubt the most important and critical decision that you're gonna make throughout this entire process. And in fact, what's in the box is exactly the reason why all the nice lawns that you see on YouTube are as nice as they are. It's high quality grass seed. Really can't fight mother nature. And what I mean by that is when you make this choice about the type of elite grass seed that you're gonna put down on your project, study your yard, take a look at your yard and take note of things like how much shade is there? Are you able to irrigate? A, uh, what kind of cut do you wanna maintain? All those kinds of decisions are going to impact the type of grass seed that you choose. Take a look at my backyard, for instance. Notice anything particular about what's going on back here? Anything special? My backyard is super shady, and so picking a type of grass like Kentucky bluegrass that really thrives in a lot of sunshine, not the best idea. Make a good choice about the type of grass seed that you're gonna put down on your lawn and spend the money here. If you're gonna spend the money anywhere in this process, spend the money here. You'll end up putting less inputs into your lawn in the long run if you choose a high quality grass seed up front. So given that I have as much shade in my backyard as I do, this year I put down Shade Savant from Barenbrug. And this is a blend of mainly perennial ryegrass that's been shown and studied to do really well in the shade. It's gonna be an excellent blend for my environment and my yard back here. We got about six inches of rain and a bunch of thunderstorms that came through the first time. So a lot of areas, they did wash out. I did have to reseed them, go around and rake stuff up. So make sure when you buy in that seed that you buy more than you need because you never know what mother nature is gonna throw at you, what you'll have to deal with. You might have to spot seed some certain areas over time. The second thing that we need to worry about is seed to soil contact. In terms of what you actually do to your existing yard, this is probably the biggest thing that you need to worry about, making sure that that seed is in the contact with soil. Now there's a couple different ways you can do that and not all of them involve crazy expensive tools. I mean, this, this right here is like a $10 rake I got from Ace Hardware. This is one way that you can rake up your soil get it nice and loose after you put your seed down, use the back side of it to scruff stuff in to make sure that your seed is touching that soil. If your seed germinates and it's not in contact with soil, has nowhere to drive those new roots to go down to, it's game over. If you're somebody that likes tools, you like gadgets, and you want something that's gonna help you get thatch and other material out of the way so you can get as close to the soil as possible with your new seed, you could take something like this Swipe Smith Thatcher that they sent me to try out in my backyard back here. To use that as a machine, go back and forth in your lawn to rip out all of that stuff. It comes with a scarifier and a dethatcher cartridge which is more like, you know, small metal tines to kind of just get yard debris out of the way. This thing does a great job and it made getting my 3,000 square feet of lawn space back there prepped for seed so much easier and so much quicker. It does a fantastic job at ripping up the soil and it even puts, you know, some little grooves into the ground and uh, stirs up that top layer of soil for you. So as you're getting ready to put that seed down, this thing makes it so easy rather than going around and raking something by hand. It had no problems going through everything that I threw at it in my backyard back here and it never quit. This is one of those tools too that you kind of like only use a couple times a year maybe. So having a good way to store this thing is something I really appreciate. And the way that they did the handle latch design on this particular unit makes it super nice and super easy to just fold it up, make it nice and flat and tuck it away in your shed 
when you don't need it. So it gets a huge thumbs up for me. If you're gonna use something like this though, I'd highly recommend you invest in a good extension cord too to make sure that this thing gets all the power that it needs. Now, one of the other things that I highly recommend that you invest in to make this process so much easier and so much more enjoyable is a really nice high quality broadcast spreader like this one that Chapin sent me. The Chapin company has been a fantastic partner of the channel this year. Built like a tank, all metal except for this you know, lightweight bucket that we got going on here. This handles up to 70 pounds of material. It has an all metal gearbox, which means it's gonna be so easy to push. Big beefy tires mean that this thing, in combination with that all metal gearbox, it's so easy to push, it's ridiculous. This thing puts other big box store spreaders to shame. It's one of those things that you buy and once you have it, you're like, I'm never going back. You'll never use anything other than a high quality spreader ever again. Thank you to Chapin for sending me this. This thing is fantastic. And it made getting my seed out in a nice even spread pattern so easy. And I can't wait for using this thing for other stuff around the yard, but get something that's gonna let you broadcast your seed nice and evenly over your space so that that seed has the best seed to soil contact that you can give it. There's only one more thing to worry about. We need to keep that seed moist so it will germinate. That seed needs proper soil temperatures and proper soil moisture to germinate and grow. And the goal is just to keep that seed and that soil moist. You don't want to keep it like super mud or anything like that. Use your eyes and get a sense for, you know, your soil being a little darker when it's wet. And just make sure that that stuff stays moist throughout the entire day. It doesn't dry out. I've got my sprinklers going four times a day right now in the backyard to keep my seed moist. Little bits at a time just help to keep that moisture in the soil. You don't want to do one heavy, super heavy watering that'll dry out or wash away any of your seed. You can turn these things on and off manually, but I would really recommend investing in a hose timer. They come in handy all throughout your lawn care journey. I've got these ones that the Melnor company sent me. They're Bluetooth controlled, so I can just go ahead and hook a garden hose up to them, use my phone to turn them on and off, set them to a schedule, and I don't have to worry about it. I don't even think they know that I'm going to mention this about their company, but I just wanted to let you guys know that they're a company that has excellent customer service. I have had issues with some of their equipment in the past, and after I've reached out to them, got in touch with support, in some cases, they just went ahead and sent me a new unit, no questions asked. I highly recommend, if you're looking for a sprinkler setup or you're looking for parts to your sprinkler system, I really would recommend the Melnor company. They make some great products and they back it up with excellent customer service. One thing I would recommend that you do not do is use straw as a covering for your seed. Straw often has weed seeds in it, so you're basically planting weed seeds alongside your grass. You can use peat moss if you want to, to help guarantee that you're gonna have some good moisture and help that germination. But I didn't use anything on my backyard this year and I've got excellent germination. So you don't absolutely need a seed covering, but sometimes it helps, it's up to you. That is all you need to do for a successful overseeding or seeding project, those three things. And once that grass seed comes up, one of the things that you're gonna be really excited to do is to start mowing that stuff. Last year, I did a complete renovation of my front lawn. It was one of the best decisions that I made. Took it down to the dirt, documented the whole thing. And I have this video right over here that you can check out about when to mow your new grass seed after it comes up. So I'll see you over there.